Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Dead Malls, and welcome everyone to our next part here in our great Season 5 adventure. In today's episode, just before we get into Detroit, we make a quick pit stop at Jackson, Michigan's Westwood Mall. This 70s mall has probably some of the most interestingly preserved aesthetics I've ever seen. When I first walked in here, it was just another mall my route, like every other, I just wasn't sure if it was going to be worth it. When I walked in, I was proven that Westwood may just be another thriving mall with these businesses on the side and all these people, but as I got in there, I saw the true nature, and I could see the struggles. But at the same time, I also saw a mall for a community, a mall with history, and a mall with beautifully preserved ceiling architecture. And before we dive into today's episode, I'd like to congratulate the winner who was able to successfully guess the next mall. Very nice job, Tanner. If you'd like to shoot your shot at being shouted out in the next episode, stick around for the next challenge. Anyways, let's head in here, take a gander, and see what Westwood has to offer us. Like I stated previously, when I first walked in here, I wasn't sure if it was worth filming. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, the main entrance area hallway was just packed, mainly with screaming children. But as I got towards that huge center court, I started to understand this feeling of emptiness. And it makes itself more apparent as we go down the halls. But first, look up and check out those unique 70s ceilings with the lights that sort of droop down towards you. You don't often see unique architecture like that nowadays. Westwood Mall itself is really, really small, so we gotta kinda fly through the history here, otherwise we're gonna be at the other end by the time I'm finished with this sentence. Anyways, <laughs> Westwood Mall's story begins in the city of Jackson, Michigan in the late 60s. By 1969, Forbes Cohen Realty, the same guys who built Lakeview Square in the last episode, had signed on with the city to build a brand new shopping center, a modern paradise of wonder and new age feel, a mall, and wonder place the first mall in the city, the indoor slash outdoor Paca Plaza. In 1970, construction would begin on the new mall with an opening date scheduled for 72. Anchoring the now-named Westwood Mall would be Montgomery Wards on the east side, with the Wartsburgs on the west. However, just before opening, Wartsburgs would become Knapp's department store. Between the straight-line concourse and wedged in between the massive two anchors lie over 70 inline tenants. And as fall of 1972 came around, residents' anticipation in the new mall would grow, and by August, the red ribbon would finally be cut. Besides this Walmart anchor, which is, um, can you really call it an anchor? I mean, it's it's connected, but it's not really there. It's like half there. Uh, I don't know. You get what you can take here at Westwood. It's better than a abandoned Montgomery Ward. I mean, looking at this directory, guys, if you get a chance, please look at the directory. It's it's depressing. <laughs> what is this Skittles? I don't I don't know. If you see the Skittles store, please let me know. I've been looking for it all day. What's next on this directory? Pepsi? Kit Kats? The Hurricane Simulator? Oh, Lord. <laughs> On August 3rd, 1972, the grand ceremony would commence. Westwood Mall, to a crowd of over 5,000, would open its shiny new doors as leaders, public figures, and Forbes and Cohen themselves would show people in. Inside, shoppers would be greeted to a world of new age wonder. Lush trees and plants dotted the hallways and center court, accompanied by the rushing fountains which would cascade down through different brick sets. 
Among these courtyard-like hallways, the trees would elegantly refract sunlight onto the water, as from above, dozens of skylights dotted the ceilings. Between Montgomery Wards and Knapp's lie stores such as Claire's, Motherhood Maternity, Kinney Shoes, Walden Books, Spencer Gifts, Circus World, and Walgreens. And unlike today, where all the stores kind of just blend together, at the time of the opening and throughout the golden years, the storefronts were unique and personal. Each one had a story. Restaurants had umbrellas and canopies, candy stores had wooden walls and chandelier-like light fixtures, record stores had neons and exuberant colors, while clothing stores were <laughs> literally just walls of mirrors. For the next few years, not much would happen, and not much would change. Pekka Plaza to combat Westwood's opening would be fully enclosed. In 1980, Naps would be sold to JCPenney, and it wasn't until the 90s when the next changes would come. Coming down here towards the JCPenney end of the mall, we're going to see one of my favorite stores, probably one of my favorite variations of a store that I absolutely love. This neon retrofitted Fi is just something else, and for it I had to pull out my retro camera. <laughs> I don't know if you'd call it retro, but uh, you know, it's it has the retro effect. <laughs> In September of 1993, Elder Bierman would be added as the mall's third anchor on the north side, completing the modern layout. In 1998, in the same sale as Lakeview Square from the last episode, Westwood Mall would be sold to Chicago-based General Growth Properties, and also similarly to Lakeview Square, would receive a massive facelift immediately after. The outdated aesthetics of the 70s and 80s would be swapped out for the new minimalistic look of the late 90s design you see today. Gone were the fountains and trees, and in were the vibrating chairs, carpet patches, and white tile galore. Stores would come and go with this renovation and repositioning of the mall, and by 2001, with Montgomery Wards taking down their mall entrance sign and locking up the doors, Westwood was in a do-or-die situation. A recession was looming, and thankfully the owners would do something about the giant empty space. As we dive into the 2000s and the modern age of Westwood, please sit back and enjoy one of the last few remaining neon and keyboard lit Phi locations left. As of 2004, it looked like this was a Phi, but was it always? Through the power of the Wayback Machine, I was also able to find Babbage's rebranding to GameStop, which they made pretty apparent at the time with a massive DVD sale. Oh yeah, 2004, what a time to be alive. Walmart would open for business in 2005 as a brand new Jackson Supercenter, attached to the mall but not open into it. The old Montgomery Wards was no more, with not a hint of its past. To combat the opening of the Walmart and new stores entering the mall, the nearby, now renamed Jackson Crossing Mall would open a brand new Kohl's, Target, and several other stores, positioning itself as a mix of outdoor and indoor retail. Through these openings and into the recession, Westwood would falter and lose several longtime tenants, The Gap, Ritz Camera, and Crown and Carriage Gifts. By 2012, Elder Beerman would become Yonkers, and they would close in August of 2018. Oh crap, another amazing space. <laughs> I thought these places were just in Ohio, but, but no, now they're they're spreading. They're like an infectious disease. They crawl their way in, they're like a parasite, and they set up shop in these dead malls, and now they've spread it to Michigan they're like a fungus. Soon they're going to be all over the states. Ugh, good lord. Stick to your traditional mall arcades. Don't go to the amazing space, people. Please don't.
Through the years of the retail apocalypse and with the loss of Yonkers, JCPenney would surprisingly hold on strong. Stores would close and Westwood would lose the glory it once held. The Walmart wall and the <laughs> empty glass Yonkers wall don't really provide much life, and inside, stores are being choked out. Zales, Foot Locker, CJ Banks, PacSun, Aeropostale, just to name a few. In February of 2021, the dying mall would be sold to Kohan, its current killers, and that leaves us where we are today. Westwood sits as a remnant of a better mall, a remnant of 70 shopping in small town America, and a remnant of a better time. So what does the future hold for Westwood? What happens when it eventually loses the slowly dying JCPenney name when it's anchorless? Let me know your thoughts down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's episode. Westwood, while small, was a beautiful mall with an amazing backstory, a classic tale of the American mall and where it sits today in the retail apocalypse. If you ever find yourself in the area, stop by and support some of the local businesses here or just find yourself taking it in what it would have been like to stand in that center court 50 years ago. If you guys enjoy my dead mall content, consider subscribing and head over to the Patreon for a monthly dead mall Polaroid taken and signed by me. Next week, as we head into the city of love and affection, we make our first stop at a 60s omnidirectional shopping center with a service tunnel that runs straight beneath it. Guess which mall we'll be at, and I'll shout you out in the next episode. Anyways, until then, have yourselves a lovely evening, and peace out guys, see you later.